Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we got another experiment for you guys and that is crashing into a mess of small grid items. Let's get started. All right, so today's experiment is going to be something a little bit odd, but we're going to try to see what happens when we crash a large grid ship into small grid item, such as a solid wall of light armor block. So all this is a light armor block, about 55 across and 127 lengthwise or width or so, so that we have enough space to crash into it. So it's a solid block that's really, really thick. And it's all kind of in a bit of a weak point where it's held by a rotor right down there. So it's a, an advanced rotor on a small grid head and it has all the light armor blocks all small grid so what's going to happen if we run through this with a large grid vehicle or a ship so basically first off we're going to use a smaller large grid ship which is going to be the thrasher right here so this thing is all hydrogen based and it's not a lot of armor it's just all light armor right here and then we're going to try just because we wanted to <laughs> we're going to use our bigger ship right over here. The, the must ship from surviving as a trader in space. However, it is much, much larger than the solid block. So not going to be very, very easy to aim at it. But we're going to try a solid wall, a small grid, light armor blocks first. And then we we'll move on to other different items afterwards. We're probably not going to try every little item because I actually try to build it out was a bit of a mess. Because uh, it really depends on what block it is. You, you can't really put this much small grid items in the game without it lagging up the whole entire thing. We're going to have our camera person or another person jump into the thrasher. And try to get 100 meters per second, which isn't too bad. And we should hit the wall in 3, 2, 1. Impact. <laughs> so that's what happens when you run into a small grid wall with a large grid ship. So not a lot of damage, actually. So the nose of the ship actually rammed it pretty significantly. I think we have one, two, three, four blocks in only. So that's actually pretty crazy. That's only four blocks in. So that's as far as the damage we get out of a smaller large grid ship with the nose. So what happens if we have that hammerhead style and ram into here? <laughs> is that going to cause much more chaos or is it going to do the same thing? All right, so we're ready to get it going and try to reach 100 meters per second. And we should see the mushroom hit this wall in three, two, one, impact. All right, so as you can see, it's causing a quite a bit of a lag. And it kind of looks like we fused into the block. And as you see, it does wobble a bit because it's being held by that rotor or advanced rotor. And I'm not sure if I can move. Nope, still a little bit laggy. But this had to be done just to see what it's like. <laughs> so all the hammerhead part is gone. It hit several layers of the small grid and actually fused interesting it actually fused the large grid right into the wall too so not exactly sure how that works but as you see here there's some large grid inside on the wall but it definitely didn't go through it it was 100 meters per second for sure and this time i'm not sure how deep it went but it's about eight blocks maybe even more Depending on where we're looking at. Oh, here's one. This is probably the furthest right there. About 10. Interesting. So hit even up there. 
<laughs> over here. Wow. It didn't get through it. So that's the interesting aspect of it. Let me see if I can spectate into it to see what it looks like inside. All right. So if we spectate into the wall. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it fused the large grid in here. It almost reached the outside, actually. That is actually pretty crazy in terms of destruction. Some of the welders that were in the front is over here. Some turrets are in here. So it just fused into the wall somehow. That's actually pretty cool. Alright, so that's your small grid light armor block. So let's go ahead and try something else. Alright, so this one took forever to load, but we have also small grid decoys. So we have a thickness of 11 and about 127 across. <laughs> Which the game really doesn't like all these small grids. Because uh, it's passing the PCU limit and all that stuff. Although I am... Ignoring it. But it is quite laggy just to do something like this. And to paste another one takes about 10 minutes to load. <laughs> so that's a bit unfortunate. So we have to use a smaller layer than we did with the light armor blocks. I wish we could do the same thing. So we can see how far it crashes into it and everything like that. But unfortunately, we don't have a choice. Otherwise, it probably take hours and hours to load if anything. If it does even load. All right, so same concept. We'll take the Thrasher, crash right into the decoys, and then we'll take the Mush Ship, the big one, crash into the decoy and see what happens. I think what is going to happen is really going to be a lot, a lot of lag. <laughs> Obviously. But the, just the design of this with the decoys, this looks insane. It's got so much little details in here, and it is quite laggy, but not too bad. But here we go. Let's see what this is going to do. With the Thrasher at 100 meters per second. Impact in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so that's what happens with a large grid, well, a small large grid versus decoys. And look at that damage there. That is looking a little crazy. This is actually kind of like making my eyes hurt just looking at the decoys like this. <laughs> Very matrixy like, and it just showed me a little bit for some reason. But yeah, it went through a decent layer. Looks about, say, five. Which is not too bad. A decent amount of damage on the ship itself. It just pretty much flatten the nose of the ship really and bounce the back and I think it's bouncing back only because it's attached to a rotor in that sense but it's not a significant amount of damage <laughs> it made a nice little shape actually so that's actually pretty cool but what happens if we use the mush ship the mush ship is much larger I'm pretty sure it's going to go right through it obviously but let's see I mean what is really going to happen is that it's going to lag like crazy the moment it touches it I think even with the Thrasher, it was pretty bad. We should have impact in three, two, one. Boom. Quite the lag. Let's see what the damage looks like once it settles down a bit. Alright, so I did get a little too close and it shoved me out of the way. But as you see here, quite the damage that it's done. Um, we kind of hit the platform itself. But what's interesting is that the ship actually went right through it without too, too much damage. Well, I mean, there is a lot of damage, but it stuck right out onto the other side. With little, yeah, not a lot of damage, really. We lost some weapons up front, but... The ship is pretty intact. 
maybe it's the way the direction where we hit it because we hit towards the bottom of the decoy as you see there and not the top part well it was a little hard to aim in that sense but it could have bounced back and wobbled forward so that's what probably happened here but decent amount of damage so let's see what's next all right so next up we have a bunch of ion thrusters <laughs> so this is looking really insane but it's about the same width um it's not very thick we only got one two three four ion thrusters kind of connected together it's not a lot but as you can see it's a bit laggy already so that's a ton of iron thrusters and we'll see what happens when we run into it with the thrasher and the mushroom as well so thrashers right here we're gonna get that thing back up a bit and then of course we're gonna get it moving ever so quickly into the iron thrusters and see what happens All right, so this is the first one that wasn't as laggy, <laughs> but it is still a little bit laggy, but it's actually merging through all the thrusters. So that's a really, really interesting crash right there. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but it's still moving and everything like that. And I guess the ship kind of just went right through it with no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the lag's starting to hit a bit but still not like a complete stop lag actually no not a lot of damage as you see here i mean some things just fell out of it but for the most part a little bit of a hole here and there but that's about it so interesting crash okay starting to get very very laggy still but everything is just broken. But let's see what the mush ship can do. All right, getting the ship ready. I'm trying to back it up to about one kilometer away so I can pick up the speed that it needs. Aiming it, not the easiest thing to do, obviously. But we are ready about 1.4 away. And of course, and of course, we're ready for the crash in three, two, one, impact. I like how it bends it back a little bit initially, but yeah, it's very laggy with the, the bus ship. It's a bit insane, but let's see what the full damage is going to be like in a second. Actually, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to kind of go right through it, but it didn't. And this is probably the second least laggiest one, too. Well, I mean, it, it's still laggy, but it's not as bad. And actually hit it a little bit better than the other ones, too. It's kind of hit it right on the top. But yeah, it was interesting how the rotor just kind of bends it back a little bit. And as you see, all the ion thrusters are peeling right off from the top here. And that is significant damage. I still like the first one, the, the light armor blocks, the small, the small blocks. That looks pretty cool in terms of the crash. But this one is actually not as bad too. I mean, looking at it with the ion thrusters all on, it looks pretty crazy. When you build with a whole bunch of of them it starts to slowly light up the ion thrusters and it's super loud when we get close to it as you hear that <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> but as you see here significant damage not on the ship but on the ion thrusters itself so that's what happens when you ram a large ship a really large ship against some small ion thrusters so we have one more to go and that one probably isn't going to work and i'll explain why in a second all right, so the next one we have is small hydrogen tank. Unfortunately, we only can do one layer's worth because the game does not like multiple layers of these. Why? I think it's because that it actually has some kind of connection or conveyor to it. So moving hydrogen from one thing to another, it's really, really laggy. So I'm trying to push in as much hydrogen in there as possible before we ram into it because I know for sure that's going to cause a nice big explosion. I put a whole layer of maybe six of them, but every layer took probably five minutes to load or even more. And loading the game takes half an hour. So we're 
probably not going to bring that one back, unfortunately, or give that a shot. But even with that many just now, it's still quite laggy. So if I wanted to put ice in there, that's where, where things get a little tricky. So if you put a whole bunch of ice to be spawned outside like this, grab it and throw it in here, you see that it's lagging. Right now it's lagging right there. Not a significant, significant lag, but it skips for a second for it to actually release and get all the ice in there. And that's, I believe, because it has some conveyor junction, not junction, has a conveyor connections into the hydrogen and everything like that. So, yeah, it, it doesn't really like all those small grids that I'm putting on these things here. But I'm trying to fill up the hydrogen as much as possible. And right now, everything's on stockpile. So hopefully, I think we might have to build a little bit more O2H2 in here just to fill it up. But we only got 7%, so it's going to be a while until <laughs> it's able to do anything, unfortunately. Or at least get a nice big explosion out of it. So let me add in a few more O2H2 generators. And luckily, this is not as laggy. The Sometimes, it really depends. When I was building this initially, every one little block I put in there lagged and took forever to load but right now this isn't too too bad so i'm just gonna put a whole bunch of them in here so i can grab the ice and convert it into hydrogen so that's not too bad right now and as you see here slowly slowly building up its hydrogen which small grid it doesn't need that it doesn't have that much hydrogen storage anyways but it's still taking a very long time to kind of get loaded up here um, any other ways to do this, uh, any other ways to do this a little bit better? I guess we could do a collector and we'll throw it in here. And then we do a gravity gen right here. And then we could do a big old block of ice. And then that way <laughs> it just falls right into the connector and sucks it in there like that. That's exactly what we want. That should give as much ice as it needs as quickly as possible. And I hope all the O2H2 have ice. Look, it's work, it's match. You can get those hydrogen through. Oh, no. Still looks like. Wow. It's still a ton of ice left. All right, let's go. Nine, 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 nine. Whole bunch of ice into there. Oh. A little off, but. Should work out okay. Sound is pretty nuts as you hear it. <laughs> Alright, it's pretty filled now. So hopefully these are a lot faster. Yeah, it's getting there. 30%. So we still got a little bit to go. But we will crash the ship right into this and see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a big, big explosion. I'm not sure if all of it will explode. But I'm pretty sure it's going to lock up the game. <laughs> All right, so for whatever reasons with the hydrogen tanks, it's preventing my other account from loading. It just constantly says connection problem. So we're probably going to go ahead and crash this thing ourselves, unfortunately. Yep, we're 100% full. We're going to turn off the gravity generator too so that it doesn't spread out the parts that are flying out of the ships and... The hydrogen takes itself. This may or may not be a really big explosion and it's likely going to lag. And again, I'm not sure why I kept on saying bad connection or connection problems with this whole build on my other account, but it is what it is. So we'll take the tanks. Let's leave it off stockpile and see what happens. So we're going to crash into it without thrasher first. And potentially the mushroom right afterwards. All right, so I'm gonna crash into it like this, and we should hit it in three, two, one, and an impact. It's gonna go boom. Whoa! <laughs> and as you see here. Significant damage. I'm trying to get out of the ship. You can see the damage. Oop. 
Interesting. <laughs> I honestly thought it's going to be a big boom. It separated itself from the grid. <laughs> but I'm surprised that these didn't just blow up. Interesting. So I would have thought this would have just blown up on its own. But it has it doesn't or hasn't. So I'm going to see if I could throw a rocket launcher at it and see what happens. Because I would have thought that it would have kind of just exploded and do a chain explosion with the hydrogen on there. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. It acted like any other small grid. So that's interesting. Yeah, so if I shot it. Alright, that did significant damage, but it didn't do any chain reactions. Maybe because it's small grid, potentially. But I don't know. That's really, really weird that it's acting this way. But yeah, they have hydrogen in it. It should make a really big explosion, but doesn't seem to be the case. Makes a bit of a laggy explosion, but not a big old chain explosion. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Alright, so my guess is that these small grid, small hydrogen tanks are not enough to make a significant explosion so that's probably why it didn't create such a big chain explosion when we hit it i know we could do a chain explosion with the small tanks because we've done it before and also large tanks <laughs> like a nice little snake of um explosions um throughout but yeah all right we're gonna try with the mush ship so we're about a k away or a kilometer away and we're gonna try to go full speed ahead basically all right, here we go. We're going to hit this thing as fast as possible, 100 meters per second, and see what happens. There's the hit. There's the explosion that's lagging up the joint. That is a much more explosion <laughs> then a smaller thrasher oh it looks like we took the whole grid with us uh, we kicked the whole grid out of its way actually <laughs> and oh it almost crashed but we knocked off the whole thing from from its um platform actually and it's just flying away over there so that's interesting it's not significant significant damage i would i would have thought the whole thing would blown off of it because it has full hydrogen 100% on there. But looks like that's not the case. I might be able to catch up to it. Looks like I should be able to. Maybe not. It's actually flying pretty fast. Well, I'm going 110 meters per second somehow. Yeah, I'm slowly catching up to it. I can't match speed with it for some reason. Maybe because I'm going a little faster than it. But yeah, it is going like 100 meters per second, I think, right? Actually, no, 76. All right, here's the damage. Look at that. Trial by fire, basically. <laughs> what is going on here? All the hydrogen tanks, not all, but a good chunk of them are on fire. Oh, fire is gone. Now it's all smoke. <laughs> but that was the experiment. Crashing to small grid items. I would hope the hydrogen tank one was going to be a bigger boom, but I guess not. But it's still interesting to find out what happens when you crash into all these small grids. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to drop a comment down below, even just to say hi. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.